energy of x of t is equal to the energy of the even component of signal plus the energy of the odd component of signal. We will prove it later. But this, these are the two important points to be remembered for the even and odd components of a signal. That is x e of t and x naught of t. The third classification of the signals is energy and power signals. Energy and power signals. So a signal f of t is said to be an energy signal. This is said to be energy signal if its energy is finite. The name itself says energy signal, right? So the energy of this signal, the signal energy should be finite. That means the signal energy should be less than infinity. It should have some valid number, 2 joules, 3 joules. It cannot have infinity value. That means very large value. So mathematically, the energy of this continuous time signal say f of t is represented as integral minus infinity to infinity mod f of t square dt and if this is finite then we say that this signal is energy signal. So in this course we will closely observe and we will also classify the signals as energy or power signals but many times in other courses related to this communication engineering this energy and power these two these two ter uh, terminologies are used interchangeably however now we will try to understand uh, the, the actual difference between the energy and power and also how to mathematically compute energy and power of various signals so energy signal has finite energy and it is also observed that this energy signals has negligible power. Energy signals have finite energy and negligible power. Negligible power. So, so if you find uh, uh, the power to be negligible, then this signal is said to be a, an energy signal. A power signal, on the other hand, has infinite energy. So, we, we, we will we'll also see how to define uh, this power uh, after some time but we will see that a power signal will have the infinite energy while the energy signals will have negligible power. Also a signal x of t or f of t is said to be energy signal uh, if, if, if integral minus infinity to plus infinity x square of t d of t is less than infinity that we have already seen right so that's why it is called finite energy signal and if this energy integral minus infinity to infinity x x square of t dt if it is equal to infinity then x of t is called power signal x of t is called power signal so a power signal has infinite energy Please note that energy signal have negligible power and finite energy while power signals have infinite energy in themselves or we say sometimes we say power signal has infinite energy also note that all periodic signals all periodic signals are power signals all periodic signals or power signals.
and that is true because periodic signals are those signals which have which are which are periodic periodic in the sense like which have a repetition rate they are continuously repeating after certain amount of time and that repetition rate is nothing but the the periodicity or or we denote it with capital T and call it as fundamental period since they repeat from minus infinity to plus infinity obviously the energy of this signal is also infinity because these signals they keep repeating and as they keep repeating the energy also gets keep up accumulating for these signals and if you see the total energy that will always be very large infinity don't take the, uh, the absolute uh, value of infinity infinity in communication theory means very large value okay so don't take it don't take the mathematical definition of infinity you can never have you no know, infinite value but you can always have a very high value that very high value is classified as an infinity value in communication theory so that is why we can directly say that all periodic signals are power signals now as we know there are two types of signals continuous time signals and discrete time signals so we can define the energy and power for both these signals so if x of t is a continuous time signal then let us summarize the definition the mathematical definition of energy and power of x of t so for continuous time signals for continuous time signal say x of t x of t is an example then you can find energy as limit t tends to infinity integral minus capital t to plus t mod of x of t square dt or you could also represent as integral minus infinity to infinity norm of x of t square so the mathematics student you would understand this norm concept right so this is similar to each other and the power of the signal we say it as average power average power of the signal can be obtained as limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t integral minus capital t to plus t mod of x of t square dt this is how you find out the average power of continuous time signals and for discrete time signals discrete time signals say x of n the discrete time signal then the energy of this discrete time signal can be mathematically computed as in take sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity mod of x of n square and the power of the average power of the discrete time signal can be obtained as limit capital n tends to infinity 1 by 2n plus 1 sigma n is equal to minus capital n to plus n mod of x of n square so the following classes of these signals can can finally be defined as x of t to be an energy signal x of t is energy signal this is energy signal if and only if its energy lies in the interval 0 to infinity that means it has finite energy so that the average power is negligible that is power is equal to 0 
So x of t is energy signal if and only if its energy lies in interval 0 to infinity so that the power is equal to 0. Number 2 x of t is a power signal x of t is a power signal and what is the condition for this so the power should be finite and the energy should be infinity very important the average power of the signal should be finite that means it should lie in interval 0 to infinity but the energy of the signal should be infinite and if there is any signal which is which doesn't satisfy either of these two properties then these are called neither power signals nor energy signals so they will be neither energy signals nor power signals so having understood the concept of energy and power you could also define energy spectral density of a signal energy spectral density or power spectral density of signal and it seems to be clear that energy spectral density is again of, of, of any signal can be obtained by integrating over minus infinity to infinity so integrate over the frequencies from minus infinity to plus infinity and that will result in the energy of the signal so this energy spectral density is related to the energy signal and power spectral density is related to the power signals so if you integrate all the frequencies that is if you integrate the energy spectral density we could denote this energy spectral density as for example capital G of F and power spectral density can be denoted as S of F just for an example then if you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity over this function that will give you the energy of the signal and if you integrate the power spectral density from minus infinity to plus infinity that gives you the power of the signal so it is not necessary that you know you calculate energies and power only in the, the continuous or discrete time domain they can also be computed uh, uh, if you know the the frequency representation or the frequency domain represent 